Welcome to the Henry AI Labs walkthrough of Keras code examples. Keras has provided 56 code examples implementing popular ideas in deep learning. This ranges from the basics such as simple MNIST and IMDB text classification, all the way to cutting edge research ideas such as knowledge distillation, supervised contrastive learning, and transformers. We'll also explore fun generative examples like variational autoencoders and cyclegan. My contribution to these code examples is to explain every single line of code in each of them, walking through each of the individual Keras examples. I'm not the author of these code examples. Please consider starting the GitHub repositories to show support to the original authors. This video will explain the convolutional autoencoder for image denoising. The autoencoder is one of the most uh, interesting generative modeling frameworks to play around with, also maybe interesting as a compression framework or as a representation learning framework where you could fine tune this representation for another kind of uh, deep learning task like classification or regression and so on. So the idea is that you take an original input encoded by using layers of deep neural networks that downsample it spatially into a compressed representation. So in our particular example, we're going to start off with the 28 by 28 MNIST digits and compress them into a 7 by 7 uh, pixel grid representation. This is different from, say, having a vector representation in the intermediate representation of an autoencoder. Then we have a decoder half that will use these transposed convolutional layers to upsample it from this compressed representation into an output space of 28 by 28 by 1 as the same as the input. And then you have the loss function, which is the distance between the reconstructed input from the hidden compressed representation and the original input. So also differently with the denoising autoencoder is that we're going to be adding noise into the images to decode them. So the encoder half is going to take in an image with a noise map added to it and then it's going to have to learn to reconstruct the original MNIST digit. So it should be a fun example for those looking to get started with autoencoders and then building on the architecture of an autoencoder to add the convolutional layers. Getting a sense of that, you could imagine, uh, say, extending this with the self-attention layers and all these like normalization layers and complex architectures that you could use to build a more complex autoencoder framework. And the image denoising application is pretty interesting. Maybe you have a self-driving car and you want to take away the rain on a rainy day for detecting stop signs and things like that. Or maybe you have some blurriness with a medical image or a microscope image or something like that. And then also overall the autoencoder framework, it's been, if you really want to build on this, there are things like the vector quantized variational autoencoder. That's a lot more advanced than this tutorial, but it's one of the cutting edge techniques for generative modeling that's out there all together. So quickly before getting into it, I also think it's an interesting example if you're kind of in this area of computer vision applications, similar to super resolution. I think image denoising and super resolution are maybe, they maybe have a decent overlap. So in image denoising, we have this Gaussian noise, usually how we construct these uh, artificial toy problems. We have this Gaussian noise that we remove from the image. So we map from 28 by 28 back to 28 by 28 and try to remove this Gaussian noise map that's been added to the pixel values in the original 28 by 28 pixel grid. Super resolution, just kind of throw this out there to give you more directions to take this example, is where you might take, say, 28 by 28 and then map it up using a similar kind of architecture as this decoder half to go, instead of this 7 by 7 intermediate compressed representation, say, go from this original 28 by 28 thing and then decode it into a higher uh, spatial resolution. So you now have a high resolution image from, say, 28 by 28 up to, say, 256 by 256 or more extremely, say, you know, 512, 1024 and so on. So this could be a really interesting idea. Also, the you know just understanding this idea of upsampling the spatial resolution, and I hope overall from this you know you could just get a better sense of the intermediate feature dimensions of convolutional networks and feature maps in deep neural networks generally. So hopefully that's inspired your interest in this um, in this example of convolutional autoencoders for image denoising. So now let's get into the code. So we start off with our standard imports: NumPy, TensorFlow, Matplotlib, the layers from Keras, Keras datasets, MNIST, and then Keras models, the model. So first, we're going to start off by pre-processing our data. So our pre-processing function is going to take in an array of data. It's going to normalize it by casting it to the type of float32 and then dividing by 255. This is going to keep every pixel value between 0 and 1. Then we're going to reshape the data so that it's uh, a good format for our batching for our deep neural network. So we're going to have uh, say this would be 1 by 28 by 28 by 1, or it would be the entire batch size 32 by 28 by 28 by 1, which is how you pipeline these batches of training data into these deep neural networks. So next up is our uh, noise function. This is how we're going to add this artificial noise map to turn our original MNIST digit into a noisy image for the sake of constructing these training pairs. So first we have the type of parameter of a noise factor that's going to be the strength of how much uh, 
how much we're going to be influencing our original image array with this random map. So in this case, it looks like we're just doing a random selection. We don't have a prior on the distribution that we're selecting this random noise from. Because say we could sample this random noise from a Gaussian distribution or uh, you know something like that, where we have a particular uh, set of how this noise is going to be distributed across the same pixel size of the array. But in this case, it looks like we're just going to be selecting random values between 0 and 1 uh, in the same array of our pixel grid. And then our noise factor is how we're going to be mixing up and blending these two images and averaging them together to form our new noisy image. And then in case any of these values, say you had, you know, we normalized it by dividing it by 255, say one of these pixel values was 0 0.8, and then we just added 0 0.5, now it's 1.3, and that's out of our idea of normalization. So we're going to use this mp.clip function to keep all the values between 1. So if it's 1.3, it's clipped down to 1. Next up, we have a helper function to display our MNIST digits so we can visualize the original noisy images and then the decoded images, or if we just want to visualize the original images and then de the decoded images without adding any noises, any noise, because we can just pass in two different uh, image batches into this display helper function. So we start off with n equals 10. We want to display 10 random images. Uh, first, we have a random list of indexes where we're randomly selecting index positions on the uh, length of our image batch. So say we have 32 by 28 by 28 by 1, and then we select indexes like 0, 3, 7, 14, 22, and so on. So we now have this list of indexes. We index our original array with this list of indexes. So now we have a list of 10 by 28 by 28 by 1, where we have 10 of our MNIST digits from, or 10 of our image data generally, because we haven't specified. This is a general function. It would work with any kind of data until you hit this part. This part. That's where you're particularly putting it into the 28 by 28 dimension of the MNIST digits. But generally, just so you have a sense of this, if you want to write a display function for you know any kind of image data. So then we use matplotlib to define our figure, the size of our figure. Uh, we're going to loop through this image data by i, our index, image 1, image 2, and enumerate, zip together the image, these two image arrays. Uh, we're going to have our plt.subplots. This is how you define like a you know, like a two by 10 matrix and then index it. So we have this two by 10 matrix of the PLT subplots, and then I plus one is where, how we're indexing it as we're looping through our zip together image arrays. So now we use plt.imshow, we reshape it to 28 by 28 by, uh, by, to 28 by 28, get rid of the one because there's no need for that in our, uh, in our visualization in plt.imshow. plt.gray says it's a grayscale. Uh, then we, uh, you know, turn off the x-axis, turn off the y-axis because we might not want the 0 to 28, 0 to 28 going in our uh, two-dimensional grid of visualizing a pixel image compared to, say, like a scatter plot or some other, you know, <laughs> two-dimensional plot like that. So then we uh, have the index of the subplot with the other image, image 2, and now we have i plus 1 plus n is how we're putting, so say this is position 1, this is position 11. So you're putting the two pairs on the top and the bottom. So the noisy image goes on the top at position 1, the clean image goes at position 11 on the bottom, 2, 12, 3, 13, and so on. So this is how we're going to be visualizing our images. So overall, we've defined a function to pre-process our data. So it's uh, compatible for input to a deep neural network, add the noise map to the images, and then display them. So next up, we're calling all these functions. We have our mnist.load data. mnist is built into the keras.data set. So it's super easy to load these kind of data sets into our computing runtimes. We just store it in train data, test data, and we don't need the Y labels because we're just going to be fitting the X pairs in this autoencoder framework. So then we map it to our preprocessing function. This is where we uh, normalize it between the range of 0 to 1 cast them as type float 32, and then reshape the uh, different images to 28 by 28 by 1, and then also so they can be batched together. And then we add this noise to our training data to form our noisy training data. So this is where we have the original training data, and we've added uh, this not Gaussian noise, just random noise. Sorry for uh, if I say that again. We're adding random noise into our original training data. This is random values between 0 and 1 added together and then clipped, so no value is larger than 1. And then we also do this to construct a test set, and then we visualize our train and our noisy train, uh, th these two pairs, using our display function. Next up is the construction of the convolutional autoencoder. So we start off with an input layer taking in the 28 by 28 by 1 MNIST digit. We have a two-dimensional convolutional layer with 32 features that will uh, spatially reduce it, or it won't spatially reduce it because you have padding equals same. This is how you preserve the spatial resolution of an input feature in a convolutional layer. Pass that through an ArrayLU activation. Then we have max pooling 2D, which is going to average together uh, local neighborhoods of two pixels. So we downsample it from 28 by 28 to 14 by 14. 
mean, and so on. So our downsampling is going to be happening with this non-parametric max pooling operation. And that's how we go from this high dimensional 28 by 28. Well, it's not that high dimensional, but we can imagine very high dimensional data. That's how we downsample it from 28 by 28, 28 down into 7 by 7. And we have the 32 feature maps as the feature maps of our convolutional layer. So we have we take in 28 by 28 by 1, map it into 28 by 28 by 32, and then we downsample it spatially into our compressed representation of 7 by 7 by 32. So now an interesting thing, again, if you're interested in like these decoder things that decode from latent variables into high dimensional outputs, maybe things like uh, super resolution might be an interesting application that you want to go to next, or generally, you know, generative models, often the generative adversarial network frameworks also have to go from this random vector Z as input into high dimensional images. And one way of doing that is with the transposed convolutional layer. So the transposed convolutional layer, uh, basically just a quick sense of it, it's a kernel that's strided such that it's larger than the original input. So as, it sli as you have the convolutional kernel that slides that three by three window across uh, maps and convolves over with the same parametric kernel, this is going to be uh, blown up with a larger uh, stride length so that you're returning a larger amount of values in the kernel than the input. So say you slide over one pixel with a 3x3 three three kernel and return 3x3 three three pixels or something like that with respect to the parameters of how you define this transposed convolution or the strided convolution is another way of uh, naming this. So we stack two of these together to go from uh, 7 by 7 to 14 by 14, 28 by 28, and this is by using this parameter of strides equals 2. So finally, we uh, compress it back from 32 features into one feature, so it's the same as our original input dimension, by using just one feature in the last convolutional layer. So this isn't a transposed convolutional layer. We take in the 28 by 28, and then we pass it through a regular convolutional layer with the same padding parameter, and then we have a sigmoid activation. So I think sigmoid, it keeps it between 0 and 1. Differently from, say, I think the tan h activation would be minus 1 and 1. Sigmoid is 0 and 1. So now we have the same 0, 1 space of pixel predictions, the same uh, dimensionality of our input, and now we can define our model by compiling all these layers together, autoencoder equals model, input x using the functional API and Keras of passing this x layer down. Now we have the atom optimizer, binary cross entropy. We're gonna be taking a per pixel loss on each position in the MNIST digit, and that's how we're gonna be training our autoencoder with binary cross entropy. So similar to if it had predicted a class label vector of 10 positions, and then you have that uh, cross entropy loss, like the P log QP or P of X log Q of X, that kind of like cross entropy loss function summing up over the X's. We're gonna have that same kind of loss function with each individual pixel position spatially on the predicted pixel value compared to the ground truth original pixel value before the noise map was added. So next up, we're gonna be fitting our autoencoder with the original training data passed in twice. So we're not passing in the uh, noise maps yet, and it's still an interesting problem because we're still compressing that original data point down into this compressed representation and then back, and we could lose information going down and then back. So it's still interesting to try to just overfit these autoencoders or see it, it you don't have to overfit them. You could still use kind of regularization in the form of dropout or uh, L2 regularization in the weights or these kinds of ideas. But the overall idea here is can we really uh, take these high dimensional image inputs, compress them into a smaller dimensional space? And this could be interesting for, say, data compression, where one interesting idea is you take all these high dimensional images that are really irritating to have these uh, large databases that store them and compress them into latent representations and maybe you could decode them from there but i don't mean to get too distracted with that idea and let's go back to this so we have the training data as our x's and our y's of the training data too so we're passing in 28 by 28 by 1 as the x's and then our y ground truth label in this case is 28 by 28 by 1 compared to say these one hot encoded class vectors that have 10 positions and you're doing cross entropy on the predicted logits of these class distributions rather we're passing in 28 by 28 by 1 and mapping it into 28 by 28 by 1 as well. So 50 epochs, batch sizes of 128. So we take in 128 of these images, compress them, map them back to their original form, and then we're going to validate them with our test set, see how well they can compress the test data. And I think it's interesting to look at these plots and see that as the training error decreases, so does the validation error. So the MNIST digits, they're uh, as they're learning to be compressed, they're also generalizing to the test set. But as you can also see, it uh, learns this pretty quickly. So it, it doesn't take it long. It takes it like one training step to go from uh, 25 loss down to 0 0.07. Then it kind of saturates there with very small gains. And that's because MNIST particularly isn't a very challenging problem for deep learning. MNIST is kind of a toy data set, more of a proof of concept at this point. Uh, you know, maybe 10 years ago that was different. But now it's, you know, these deep neural networks can do tasks with MNIST really quickly.
So now that we've trained our model, we're going to visualize some predictions of our autoencoder. So we run to run inference and make predictions with this model. We just do autoencoder.predict passing in the test data, and then we store the output of those predictions in this predictions array. And these are just 28 by 28 by one, uh, or however many test uh, images we had, say it's 10,000 by 28 by 28 by one, some kind of uh, batch tensor dimension like that. So now we're going to display our test data and our predictions. Again, we sample randomly 10 of these images and then plot them with the original instance on the top and then the reconstructed image on the bottom. This is our original test instance and this is the reconstructed image after it's been compressed into that 7 by 7 by 32 compressed latent representation in our autoencoder. So now let's add in the more interesting thing, the denoising part, where we're adding the noisy data and we're reconstructing the original MNIST digits after this random noise map has been added. And again, they're clipped, so no value is larger than one. And that's how we're constructing these uh, noisy training instances without some prior distribution. It's just uh, going across the spatial resolution, say 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, so on, up to 0, 28, then 1, 0, 1, 1, so on up till you've added this random value to each pixel position. And that's how we're constructing these instances. So we have our noisy train data, our train data, so 28 by 28 by one, back into 28 by 28 by one, 100 epochs, 128 batch size, uh, shuffle it, and then we have our validation data constructed the same way. So now we see our loss curves, we uh, have a more interesting thing of going from 96, uh, 996 down, and then steadily across the 100 epochs, getting better and better at reconstructing the original image, image, although it seems like from epoch, yeah, it seems like kind of after epoch 50, it doesn't really get any better. But we do see you know, very small improvements, and then we do see, uh, luckily, the validation loss is decreasing as well, so we haven't just overfit our training set. So now we can visualize some of these predictions. Again, the same kind of syntax for uh, running inference and then storing the inferences in an array and then displaying them by randomly selecting indexes. And we see how well it's done at reconstructing the original MNIST digit without this original noise. And this is on the test set, so not what it had been learning with the training set, which is pretty interesting because it's learning to generalize to remove noise maps from MNIST digits that it hadn't seen during training. So these particular high frequency noise maps, it has never seen these particular patterns, but it can still uncover this underlying semantics of the MNIST digit and reconstruct it. So to summarize, this tutorial shows you how to uh, add these noise maps to construct a denoising autoencoder problem, how to construct one of these uh, deep neural network architectures to map these images down into a compressed latent space and then back into the original input space in the output and apply a cross entropy loss on each pixel to learn how to reconstruct the original input. And we saw that it did surprisingly well at reconstructing these MNIST digits. So overall, I hope this was an interesting uh, tutorial, kind of a simpler example with respect to this overall scene of our Keras code example playlist, but I still think it's a great place to get started. And uh, these ideas of variational autoencoders, which we'll look at later, adds a little more structure to this autoencoder framework and this really interesting vari variational inference idea. But I still think this is a great place to get started. Maybe you'll also be interested in things like super resolution that have a very similar uh, framework as this and find other applications for the variational autoencoder. So thanks for watching. Uh, please check out the rest of the Keras Code Example playlist and subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos. Mm -hmm.